Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating halftone effects using gradient filled shapes in Photoshop. But before we begin, let me show you my additional Photoshop training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes, including over 200 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine is better. Please feel free to share this coupon with family and friends. Swinging back to Photoshop, I've just created a document which is about 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels. It just has a plain grey background. We're going to add a circle to it. So I'll go to the Ellipse Shape tool here. I'm making sure that of the three options up here, I have Shape selected. I'll hold the Shift key as I drag out a circle. For this circle, I don't want it to have a stroke. That's really important. So I'm going to turn off its stroke and I'm going to fill it with a gradient. So the gradient I'm going to use is a black to white gradient. Now you can do that also from the options bar up here. You want to set your gradient to radial for this particular effect. And you'll also want to make sure that your gradient has black in the middle and not on the outside. And this icon here lets you switch your gradient around. We're going to apply a halftone filter to this shape. So I'll choose the filter menu. Now, before I start, I'm going to convert this for smart filter. So I'll click here. Converting it for smart filters makes it a smart object. And that will mean that the effect that we're going to apply to this shape can also be edited, which it wouldn't be able to be edited if you didn't make it a smart object first. And you do that by choosing convert for smart filters. With the shape still selected, we're going to choose Filter, Pixelate and Color Halftone. Now for the settings I'm going to use, I'm going to set my maximum radius to 50 pixels. That means the largest of the circles in our halftone is going to be 50 pixels. And then for this one, I'm setting my channels to the exact same value. That's really important if you want a black and white halftone. And I'm also setting them to 90 degrees. So I've got channel 1, 90, as is channel two, three, and four, I'll click OK. So this is the half tone effect that we get from those particular settings. You can see that the dots are sort of all running into each other. You'll also see that they form this sort of grid. Now we can change that by changing some of the specifications. So let's go and do that. I'm going to again create another circle. I'm again going to fill it with that same gradient. So I'm going to make sure it has no stroke. That's really important. And the fill is going to be a radial gradient. I'm again going to convert it for smart filters. Now the first thing we're going to do is break up this sort of grid arrangement. So this time we'll choose filter, pixelate, color, half tone. I'm still going to use 50 as my radius because I like the size of these dots but I'm going to change my channel values to 45. Now all of them are going to be the same 45. That'll give me a black and white half tone. But when I click OK here, you'll now see that instead of this very vertical and horizontal arrangement, everything's sort of on a diagonal. I think it looks a bit better. Now let's address the issue of the dots in this half tone being really close together. Before I start and create a new shape, I'm going to make my foreground color a little bit darker. So I'm going to select a gray. That's the colors down this side here. And it's going to be about two thirds of the way down. If your dialogue doesn't look like this, make sure to have selected the H option, the hue option. And then you can just click on the edge here to get a gray. I'm going to create another circle. So I'll drag out the ellipse with the shift key selected. Again, I'm going to set its stroke to nothing. That's really important. I'll set its fill to a gradient. And in this case, I'm going to choose this first gradient, which is foreground to background. I have a foreground color, which is a dark gray, a background color, which is white. That's what my gradient looks like. Make sure that you have selected radial and make sure that your gradient has the dark color on the middle and not on the outside edge. Again, I'm going to convert this for smart filters. And again, I'm going to apply the exact same effect as we used previously. Filter, pixelate and color halftone. 
Now again, I'm using 50 as the maximum radius and 45 for my channels because we know that gives us this nice arrangement. I'll click OK. Now we have the dots in the center of our half tone a little bit more separated. So that's done by using a gradient that's actually a gray rather than a black gradient. Now if you want your half tone to look a bit like this one but you don't want the white, you can't actually do it by using, for example, a gray to transparent gradient. It just doesn't work. So what you have to do is use a gray to white gradient and then you have to get rid of the white that you don't want. There's a fairly simple way to do this. It's just something that's not very well understood. So I'm going to the ellipse layer that controls this circle down here. Let's actually make a duplicate of it so that we can have the original and also the one that we're just about to fix. So let's grab our duplicate. Now for this one, I'm going to double click the ellipse layer and that's going to open up this layer style dialog. And we want to go to the blending options, which is this topmost option up here. I'm just going to move the dialog out of the way because I want to be able to see it as I work on it. The blend if sliders down here are going to allow us to remove the white. And what we do is adjust this topmost slider because it says this layer. So if this layer is white, we want to see through it. I'm just going to drag this little icon underneath the bottom of the slider. And that blends this layer into the layer below in the areas where it is white. Now, you can also split this little indicator in two. You hold the Alt key on a PC, Option on a Mac. That lets you split it in two. And it's not a bad idea to do that because then you get a sort of transition between these indicators. So this indicator marks out where everything is being removed. In this white area, everything is disappearing. And then between these two little markers, we've got a transition from pixels being removed to not being removed. And of course, they're not being removed anywhere where the color is darker than this color here. So you get a slightly smoother effect by splitting this set of handles here. I'll click OK. Of course, it's also possible to create half tones from gradients that aren't radial. Let me just create a square document. This one's 2000 by 2000 pixels in size. Now I'm going to fill this artboard with a linear gradient. Let me just add a new layer. This time I'm not going to make a shape. I'm just going straight to the gradient tool. Up here in the gradient panel, you can select the gradient to use. If you use black, then you're going to find that your circles are going to all run together. If you use a foreground to background where your darkest color is a sort of you know, two thirds gray, if you like, that would be the best option. Now I'm also going to select linear here and I'll just drag across the document to fill it with my gradient. If I hold the shift key, it goes in in a perfectly horizontal line. So I've got dark gray over this side, white over this side. And I think I would like it to be a bit whiter. So let me just go for an ideal gradient here. Now we'll choose filter convert for smart filters, and then we'll apply our halftone gradient filter, pixelate, color halftone. Again, I'm going to use 50 and our 45 for our channels and click OK. And here we have a halftone gradient. Now at any stage, if you didn't want this to be black and white, if you wanted it to be color, it's very easy to achieve. I'm going to come in here and just double click on the color halftone filter. And in this case, to change this from black to color, we're just going to change the channel values. I'm going to set the first one to 15, the second one to 30, one to 45, and then one to 60. In other words, I'm just offsetting all of these channels from the same value. They're now all different values. I'll click OK. And now we get this color half tone effect. And you can experiment with different values for those channels to get different effects in your color half tone. And of course, we could have done that exact same thing with these shapes here. Any one of these could be created as a color half tone. Let's go and grab this one and just prove to ourselves that it can be done. I'm going to use different values this time. This time I'm using 10, 20, 30, and 40. So I get a slightly different result. I hope this video has been of help to you to understand 
how you can convert gradients into half tones in Photoshop and control the results that you get. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.